Well, good morning, everybody. Everybody who's here and everybody who's online. How are we all doing this morning? Any thumbs up for me today? Yeah, okay, we've got some, that's good. Um, how about the folks online? Hopefully people are be able to tune into the Top Hat chat. Oh, well, again, the regular Top Hat chat seems to not be working, so we have a pseudo chat question that's been set up, and I have not assigned it as homework. So that would be the problem there. That's why nobody is talking to me. It's not because you have nothing that you want to say. Well, I don't know, maybe. All right, let's set that as available. Okay, so now hopefully people can see that in the Top Hat chat. And whether people are in the room physically or whether you are somewhere else, um, either way, feel free to, to say hi in the chat to each other, etc. I'm now getting at least one thumbs up in the chat, so that's fantastic, or the pseudo chat. So that's fantastic. It looks like people are, are able to access that. Okay, uh, so let's see. Okay, I think we're all set. Um, so today we are going to continue talking about new types of data structures. Uh, and today we're going to talk about a data structure called the dictionary. Anybody already familiar with a dictionary in Python, maybe? Is anybody familiar with a dictionary in uh, any other sense of the word? Hopefully, hopefully we're all familiar with dictionaries and uh, thesauruses and stuff. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to talk about a dictionary which is not a book in which you can look things up, but it is kind of analogous to a book in which you can look things up by name, in which you can look up a definition by a particular word. And so there's going to be a bit of an analogy there. Um, excellent. We've got a comment that everything is working besides the regular chat. Fantastic. It is always nice to hear when things are uh, actually working. Uh, we've had lots of things not working reliably. Really looking forward to it. Well, you know, touch wood, but I'm really hoping the next time I teach this class there will be a little bit less having to deal with people online and people in present in the room and maybe just talk to people who are in the room. But still use the lecture capture if somebody misses a lecture or something. So we have been talking about these things. We've been talking about collections that are ordered. So that would include, oh, actually, I should ask you, what are some examples of ordered collections that we have seen? And I've even flashed it on the screen ever so briefly. We got some lists. Yep, that's good. Tuples, arrays. OK, good. So we've seen lists, tuples, and arrays. So either we remember that, in which case, good job, or we can read really fast, in which case, also, good job. Uh, we've also now looked at an example of an unordered collection. Last lecture, and what was that? That's right, we are talking about sets. So today we're gonna to talk about something that is a bit different again, which is a type that is a bit more sophisticated. It allows us to do more things than we would be able to do with simply sets, lists, um, tuples, or arrays, all of which contain a bunch of values, but they're just values, right? So you might, you can iterate over each of the numbers that's being stored in an array or each of the values that's being stored in a list or what have you. Um, but they all just contain values. We're gonna see something that's a little more sophisticated to today, which is called a dictionary. And what's interesting about a dictionary is it is an associative data structure. That means it allows us to associate certain values with other values. And this is going to give us a lot of power to do things in our programs that currently would take a whole bunch of work to do. So we're going to talk about the semantics of dictionaries. Obviously we'll have to look at the syntax of them a little bit and we'll talk about how we use these data structures. Alright, so first of all if we want to find things inside of a thing. Um, so here's a fairly generic Python function that we could use to find a needle in a haystack. So if we have um, any sort of data structure that we can iterate over, so in this case haystack could be a list, it could be a tuple, it could be an array, it could be a set. If we want to iterate through a collection and find a particular value and check to see whether it's there or not, then, then we can do that. And so I've got, uh, I want to be over here. 
because that's what pops up online as well. Um, so, you know, if I have some names, somebody shout out some names. It could be names of you or, or somebody else. Give me some names. Smith. Xander. Xander. Okay, Smith and Xander. So there are two names that people want to use. So if I want to find the name Xander in this collection of names, I can run my function and it will check the first name and say, are you equal to Xander? No, okay, well, how about you? Are you equal to Xander? If you are, then it will print, yay, I found it, and return from this function. Um, at which point, do we go on to the next element in the collection? What does the return statement do? pops us out of that function immediately, so we're gone. Um, but if we get all the way through that collection, so if we look all the way through the haystack, we look at each individual thing in the haystack and say, you're not my needle, you're not my needle, you're not my needle, then eventually we get to the end of the function, we print didn't find it. So in this case, it will find it. Uh, oh, right, let me, there we go. Actually define that function. And now I have to redefine names. There we go. So we found it. Hooray! If I say, uh, let's find the name Zaphod in our names. Um, does anybody? Oh, no. Yes, I will. Does anybody get that movie reference? Well, of course, it's a reference to a series of books long before it was a film, but anyway. Um, so we can look through and say we didn't find it. Let's say, however, that we have a list which is a bunch of strings how many elements are going to be in this list none. Mm, we've got none that's a controversial answer why do we say none So this is a thing called a list comprehension, which I said I won't make you write. You won't ever have to write a list comprehension, but it's good for you to recognize what it is. So this is something that is kind of like saying, um, let's have a loop with for i in this range, append the next thing to a list. So this is gonna create a list that contains 10 million elements because remember, the, the underscores are kind of a, a funny way of writing an integer, but it's actually a super helpful thing that Python lets us do that other languages don't, because we can break it up into natural groupings. Um, so here we have a, a list that should now have 10 million elements in it, all of which are strings, and those strings would look like, so here's the first 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So we take a bunch of integers, we convert them to strings, we fill up this list with 10 million elements. And by the way, just like, see how quick it was to create a list of 10 million elements? No problem. Boom. Done. Um, now, let's try to find the name Zaphod in that list. Are we going to find it? No, we are not. <laughs> Look how quickly we didn't find it. So that's pretty quick, right? The computer is able to go through 10 million elements and say, uh, nope, that's not the one I'm looking for, that's not the one I'm looking for, that's not the one I'm looking for, and it's able to do that in like a second or so. That's pretty impressive, right? The computer's pretty quick at these things. Um, but 10 million elements isn't actually a very big data set. How about 40 million elements? How about 40 billion elements? Now we're starting to kind of talk about real money. So if we have a data set and we are going to look through this data set of 40 billion elements, try to find a particular value, it's gonna take a long time. Um, even if we had to search through that list of only 10 million values, 10 million names, let's say, and we had to look for a particular name, but let's say we had to do it a whole bunch of times that could still really kind of slow down some, any kind of meaningful program. If it takes a second to search all the way through that list, and we have to do that, say, 397 times, because there are 397 students in Engineering 1 in some way, shape, or form, not all active and going for match this, this August, but in some way, shape, or form, there's 397 students associated with Engineering 1. Um, if we had to look for 397 names in a huge data structure or something, 
397 seconds is kind of a long time, right? We wouldn't really want to run a program and have it wait for 397 seconds, right? That, that would be kind of gross. Um, so that's kind of one issue that we have with these collections that we iterate through step by step. Um, so if we want to look through a collection one element at a time, th this is a bit of an issue. The other issue, which is maybe going to be a little bit more apparent, is that when we are writing programs, uh, it's been said that there are only two hard problems in computer science. One is cache invalidation, and the other is naming things. Um, and there, there's actually some more wisdom to that statement than you might uh, appreciate just yet. It's kind of funny, but it's also kind of true. Um, naming things can be very hard, both in the sense of how does a person apply a label to something, but also how do you name particular objects that exist by their location or by their contents. Or, eh, eh, lots of interesting questions. Um, but let's say we're doing this. So there's a function called enumerate in Python, which is a kind of a neat thing. So if we have, let's see, um, I want more names than this now. So somebody shout out some more names. Smith, Xander, Jillian. Joe. Joe. Bob. Bob. Mike. Okay, somebody said, hey everyone in the chat. So I'll say, hey everyone. Bike, okay. I haven't met a person named Bike yet, but you never know. Uh, someday. Okay, so now we've got some names here. Um, the enumerate function, uh, for i in enumerate, we can pass in an iterable thing, so something that we can iterate over, and enumerate will give us for each of those elements it will give us both the element and an increasing number. So we can say we have element zero, element one, element two, etc. So enumerate, well, it enumerates things. It gives numbers to things. Um, and this will help us here find that if we wanted to look up the name, hey everyone, we could have, we could look at names five. Uh, I'm just gonna restart the Python backend because having that list of 40 million elements kind of hanging around. It's sort of slowing everything down. So let's try this again. Um, all right, so we had names like Bob, Jillian, Xander, Smith. Let's go with John, Jacob, Jingleheimer, Schmidt. There we go. Uh, so those can all be names of students, and so now we said, let's uh, enumerate those students. There we go. Um, so if I want to access students 2 or students 6, right, how are we kind of naming these students within the collection, well, we're naming them by where we find them, by a location in this ordered collection, in this list, or we could do the same in a tuple or in an array. So we could say you are sort of named by the fact that you are element four, okay? So if I had a list of all the students who registered for this course, so all 118 students who registered for this course, there might be an ordered list that says here are the students that registered and the order in which they registered. And maybe you registered fourth, or maybe you registered 110th for this course. But we could identify you if we wanted to. It'd be kind of weird, but we could identify you as, hey, student number four, because you were the fourth one to register. Um, but that, that would be a little bit weird, right? So that is not really how we like to name things. I mean, we, we could, right? And if we were using lists, then we'd sort of have to name you that way. Say, well, I'm gonna name you student 73 because you're the 73rd student to register. Um, but that's that's kind of a bit weird, right? You might say it's, it's odd. Well, in one of those cases, it's odd. I guess in the other case, it's even, isn't it? Um, but it doesn't really matter to you, and it doesn't matter to me, and it kind of doesn't really matter to anybody 
which order you registered in, right? When you registered for this course. That would be a poor way to choose to name you for lots of reasons. Um, for one thing, it's a little bit insulting <laughs> to say that you're just a number or something. Um, and so we don't really care whether you registered first or 10th or whatever. And also, this isn't a very meaningful way to, to, uh, to name you or to refer to you. If somebody sticks up their hand and I say, yes, you in the back, student 17, why don't you ask your question? That, that's not going to be a very nice encounter for anybody, right? So what's a better way to refer to you? Even the people who are in the room, you can pop open your top hat and give me some answers here. What's a better way to refer to you? There is more than one right answer here, so feel free to be creative. in that philosophically there's more than one right answer. I don't think I put in any correct answers in Top Hat, so Top Hat's not going to mark you wrong no matter what you say. We are getting some answers, but people are still typing away online. Maybe I'll give uh, just a little bit longer. It's another like five, four, three, two, one. And a very long one. And OK, let's stop it there. OK, so we've got a few possibilities. So most people said, or the plurality, it wasn't the majority, but the plurality of people said name. Yep, or by name, could refer to you by name, yep. Uh, string slash name in the same data position as the number. Yeah, so the thing that, when I'm using this list of students, I'm kind of forced to refer to you by this index, this position, but that's not really how I want to refer to you, but somebody's saying here that what I really want is the name that is held at that position. I, don't want to be forced to refer to you by, um, by that name. Now, a student ID, yep, that's also a pretty good choice. I mean, if you come to an office hour, then maybe you'd feel kind of weird if, you're, if I said, greeting student 2021-12345, how are you today? Well, I am very well, faculty member 2001-25805. That, that would be kind of weird, right? Um, however, in computing systems, I mean, if you have a student ID, the nice thing about it is it's the same student ID in this course and in this course and when we're doing promotions and when we're doing scholarships and we're doing lots of different things, you have the same student ID. So we're not like uh, the student who registered fifth for my course got a grade of 97. Instead, I can refer to a particular student ID. There are occasions in actually when we kind of prefer to use a student ID as opposed to a name because there are circumstances in which decisions have to be made and you know, if we don't actually know who we're deciding but we just see their academic record, it could reduce bias in some way. So there might be circumstances when we want to look at somebody by a student ID. Uh, but student ID or student number or name, yeah. Um, someone says, Jonathan Anderson. Well, I mean, I'm probably not going to refer to you as Jonathan Anderson. Um, I mean, unless there is a Jonathan Anderson in this course. I don't think so. I have previously taught a Jonathan Anderson, and he was quite freaked out that he was Jonathan Anderson in computer engineering, and he played the trombone, which, you know, I grew up playing the trombone. Um, and then he said, sir, are you my clone? And then I said, well, I'm older than you. And then he was like, whoa. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, there are lots of... Yeah, mostly. I probably want to refer to you by name or by student ID or something like that in, the, in a computing system. So name, student ID, yeah, very good. So sometimes when we have to have a collection of pieces of information about individuals, about anything, the position where you find yourself in an array or when you were added to a set or something is not really important, um, but we need some kind of a sensible name for you. And this is where dictionaries come in. So all of that is kind of motivation for why in the world are we learning about this new data type? Well, 
A, because it's in the syllabus, <laughs> uh, but B, because it's actually generally very useful to be able to name things sensibly. So what does a dictionary do? Well, a dictionary, like other kinds of collections, it holds values, but it holds named values. So um, Python has a type called dict, which is short for dictionary. You'll notice we like to keep our type name short because programmers don't like to repeat themselves and also we're lazy in a good way. Um, but it, a dict is another example of an unordered collection. Now there's a slight caveat there that we'll mention later, but, but generally speaking we can think of it as an unordered collection. Um, but every value that is held in the dictionary also has a key. And you can think of that as like a name. So the analogy to a big book, which is a dictionary, is that you can look up a definition by the word that it defines. So I can look up the word programming and find a big definition of what programming is. And there's probably like four different definitions of what programming is. Um, so in that case, I might have you could think of the dictionary as something where you look things up by a string and then what you get is a list, a list of definitions where each of those definitions might be a string, something like that. Um, and so yeah, a dictionary allows us to look up values by some kind of name that we chose, a name that is meaningful to the particular piece of information to the data structure. And it's meaningful, something that the programmer thinks is meaningful. And we can look up values using that key. So when we put a key into a dictionary, we get a value back. And we also get it lickety split. So even if you have a dictionary that has millions or billions of elements in it, we can grab something from inside of a dictionary very, very fast if we know the key that we're using to look it up. If we don't know a key, we can also still just iterate over a dictionary. We can iterate over all the keys in the dictionary or over all the values, or in fact, over both at the same time using tuples. So um, to create a dictionary, the syntax is you know, it's different from other collections that we've seen thus far, but it's pretty straightforward. So instead of using square brackets to define a what, what, go, what, does, what do square brackets go around? Lists. Lists. Uh, what do parentheses go around? Tuples, yes. Um, or in some cases, a thing called a generator, but we're not talking about generators in this course. Um, and so square brackets go around lists or list comprehensions. Parentheses go around tuples or generators, um, we put braces around dictionaries. So curly braces. And this is what a dictionary looks like. So we have curly braces, not brackets, not parentheses, they're braces. Um, and we have items that are separated by commas, just kind of like we've seen in other collections. But each of those items has two things in it instead of just one. There's a key and a colon, and then a value. So let me, in this case, let's say that I did want to keep track of students by student ID, because a student ID is something that keeps coming up over and over. So some, I, maybe we are writing a program that says, enter your student ID, and I will tell you what your promotion status is. And that's something that we're actually kind of working towards as we develop our uh, promotion software to get to the point where a student could visit a page that says here's everything that we think we know about you that is relevant to your promotion status and then you can check it and see whether if there are any issues or errors we're not there yet but that's where we're working towards um, if I want to look up a student by student ID then well look at that I can enter my student number and that is my old student number. Um, it's, it's amazing how, you know, I haven't used this very much in the last 20 years, but still it's, it's immediate. Like it's my, my parents' phone number growing up and uh, that. And it's funny that even these days, I'm like, you know, I know my wife's phone number, but I have to think about it for just a second because I had a smartphone before she got that phone number. Uh, whereas the phone number that she grew up with, that I remember because I called that before she had a smartphone. Anyway, um, so yes, we can remember some old numbers. But you can see that we can look up any value inside the dictionary by providing the key. And we can use whatever, yep.
Yeah. Ah, that's an excellent question. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could have no indentation or in fact no white space at all and that would be absolutely completely fine. So it is kind of a convention or style. If you're going to have a dictionary that has a bunch of elements in it, often we'll have like an open brace, closed brace at the end and then lines in between that have been indented just to kind of show whoever's reading your code like this stuff is sort of set apart from this other stuff, uh, but it's not a requirement. So that's a good choice, or that's a very good question. All right, so each item has a key and it also has a value. Oops, I should go back to the chat over here in case. Ha, ah, someone says, uh, can we have multiple values for each key? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, so each key can have one value, but that value can be whatever we like. So if we wanted to, we could have that value be something like a string. So here's a dictionary. Um, and yes, I probably should acknowledge the comment. Congrats to everyone in Inch, one who got a scholarship. Good job. Uh, hooray, yes, okay. Uh, I'm not sure who that is in this room and not, but that's fine. Um, so we can use whatever type we like in a value. So here we have keys being integers that map to string values. Um, here we have integer keys that map to floating point values. Um, but here's an example where we have integer keys that map to values, which in this case, actually, this is a list. So if we want to have multiple values, we can, but only in the sense that a key still maps to one value, but that value could be something that has a bunch of values in it, like a set or a list or an array or something like that. So good question. And we can, so we can use any, any type we like for the value. We can use many, not any, but many types for the keys. So this is something which if you've experimented with dictionaries on your own, and I know a few people have like tried to go ahead a little bit and use them in the project and stuff, and, and that's cool in the project, feel free to use absolutely whatever Python you like, as long as you use the things we've asked you to use you can go beyond if you want to. That, that's great. Independent learning, hooray, love it. Um, but you may have run into an issue that looks kind of like this. Um, so here, all of these keys that I'm showing in this dictionary, in these dictionaries, are all integers. But we can use other types too. So we can use strings as keys for a dictionary. And so this is something that maybe makes even more sense, right? If I previously had this, uh, all right, so I had these names. Okay, uh, if I wanted to, something that might be a little bit kind of more personally meaningful is if I said, well, Bob is student number 20, 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Jillian is student 20, 21, 98765, uh, and Xander, is student 2021 55555, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so now I have a dictionary where now I can look up students by name. And this is maybe something that's a little bit more personally meaningful to most individuals. Although we do have multiple students in the class who have the same name. So we might need to then disambiguate with a full name. I have actually been in a situation before where I had two students with the same first name and the same last name in Engineering 1020, uh, which is a really good example. I mean, it's a big enough class and they were fairly common names. So um, that's a good example of why student IDs sometimes are really important because student IDs are absolutely unique. Um, but yeah, so we, can have strings as our key type. We can have tuples as our key type. If you're implementing a checkers game, then you might imagine using uh, building a board in which you have a tuple that represents a key or something. Um, but this is going to give us an error. So let's try this in Thani. So I'm going to construct a dictionary that has a list as a key. This is going to say we have an error. Uh-oh, some red text has come up, and the red text says that is an unhashable type list. Huh? What in the world does that mean? 
Um, someone says, can we append to each key? Uh, so the answer to that will become apparent once we've talked about this next slide. So thank you for asking that question at that moment. Uh, it's excellent timing. Um, so the error that we got there was this error that said unhashable type. Huh? What does that mean? So we can use absolutely any type we like for a dictionary value. But for a dictionary key, and actually it turns out this is also true for values that we put into a set, the key in a dictionary has to be hashable, which means that we have to be able to get a, val a number out of it that is used to identify the thing based on its contents. Now, we don't have to go into all the details of how those hashing algorithms work. If you go on to ECE 4400, then you will go, absolutely go into how does a hash function work in order to build a hash set or a hash table, etc. For this course, we don't. But one key thing we do need to understand is that the only kinds of values in Python that are hashable are immutable values, so things that cannot change. Because if I have a, oops, if I try to use a tuple as a key in a dictionary, uh, square p1, there we go. Uh, if I try to use a tuple and then I go to look up a value inside of that dictionary by tuple, I say, hey, go get me value 0, 1 or 0, 0 or 0, 3. I know that all of those keys, because they're immutable, they haven't changed, they're going to have the same value that they had when I put them in to the dictionary, which means that they're stable and I can, they're reliable for going to look things up again. Whereas if I were to say, let's create a list that has some elements in it, and then I tried to create, there we go. Now, of course, that gave me an error. But if I wanted to look up something, um, yeah, well, it's giving me the same error because I can't pass a list in. But if I wanted to look up a value, uh, if I want to have a dictionary where I had a list that mapped to a value, but that list, well, maybe I could change that list, right? And I could say, okay, that dictionary used to have a mapping from 1, 2 to this name, but now I've changed the list. And so the list that I'm using in the dictionary is not the same list that we were using before. So am I trying to look it up by its original value or look it up by its new value? Mm, there's no way to generate a stable value, hash value. There's no way to, um, to stably and reliably and repeatably identify that specific key value. And so what we need to know for this level, of course, is that all of the containers that Python gives us, which are immutable, are also hashable, as long as they contain values that are hashable. So if you have a tuple of numbers, that's great. Those are all immutable. If you have a tuple of strings, that's great. If you have a tuple of lists, well, that's not good because then the lists are immutable. So tuples are okay if the elements are hashable. Lists are not. Uh, strings are okay. And arrays of characters are not. Um, so this is something where it would be really, really good to do a little bit of play, practice. Write some code that uses some dictionaries. Create a dictionary that holds something that is of relevance to something you're doing in one of your first year courses, etc. Uh, let me ask you this.
All right, we've got some answers starting to come in. Good. All right, I'll uh, give this another few seconds. All right, let's close this out in another five, four, three, two, one, and there we go. Okay, um, so let's try to walk through this example. So first of all, we're creating this dictionary here. Um, how many items does that dictionary have? Five, that's right. Each item is a key and a value taken together. So it's got five keys, it's got five values, it's got five items. So we create this dictionary you can see there's five items, and if I wanted to, I could ask what is the length of that dictionary. And I'll say it's five, because there's five items in it. Then, um, if we try to look up D1, what does the one refer to? Does that mean in elements zero through five, or, or in items zero through five, we're looking at not element zero, but element one? Is that what it means? Right, we're using the key one. So we're taking the number one and we're looking up which item here has the key one, and it's this, which means that D1 is going to be two. When we look at D3, we're taking the item, or we're taking the number three and we're using it to look up key value three. And so key three here has the value four. So this is going to be equal to two divided by four, so 0 0.5. And let's have a look at what people said. All right, and <laughs> I guess at the end there, someone was running out of time, so it's just all the ones and zeros that you could type quickly, so you still got the participation. That, that's good, that's fine. <coughs> okay, so, there we go. And go back to the pseudo chat. Um, there's a smiley face there. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, you couldn't see the question online because it was showing on this screen, not that screen. Sorry. I will open that question up as homework. Sorry about that. Okay. So. Um, so though we can use any value we like, any type of value at all, as a value in a dictionary, but the key, there's only some values that we can use. So we can use anything that doesn't change, number, a Boolean value, we can use anything that is an immutable collection of other things, so like a string or like a tuple. Those are all fine. And so we access individual elements just like indexing. So you know this first line looks kind of a lot like what we've seen before, taking a number and passing it in. Only this time, it is not um, it is not using that number as an index within an ordered list or something. Instead, it's saying, "Give me the L or the value that corresponds to this key." And whatever our key type is, we can use whether it's a string, or it's an integer, or it's a tuple, or whatever. There's a question over here. Uh, yep, yeah. so if we wanted to, we could have There we go. Um, so we could have a dictionary that uses a bool as a key value. Kind of the limitation there, though, is that there's only two possible keys. So that's not something we would tend to do very much, but, but we could. 
So we can index within a dictionary. We can grab a particular value that corresponds to a key, look up that value by key. And we can also iterate over keys and values in a dictionary. So kind of like other collections I showed you, we can use the len function in order to say, hey, how many items do you have? Um, by default, when you say, I want to iterate over all the things in this dictionary, by default, what you get is the keys. So here I had my dictionary of students. So if I said for s in students, print s, this would print what? What's this going to print? Given what we just said about how we iterate over dictionaries. It will print names. Yes, so for each student, it's going to print their name. Uh, there's a question here. Will all top hat questions be posted eventually, or is it required that we answer them at the time they are posted? I try. <laughs> I try to post all the top hat questions as homework after the lecture. Um, sometimes, because I kind of have to immediately get my headspace into prepping for my other course, I often, let's put it this way, I often forget to post it as homework. If I do, and you know, if I just forget to post it as homework for you to answer later, then please feel free to send me an email and say, could you open this question, please? Just have to mention it by name. All right, so that's right. We print all the students' names. We can also over iterate over the values if we want to by calling a method called values. So if we have a dictionary of students in this case, and I ask for students.values, so now I'm going to say uh, for s in students.values, print s. Well, given that this is our student's dictionary, what is this going to print? Uh, well, there will be some ones and twos and threes in there, but it's going to print the values that are contained in the dictionary. So we have in this dictionary, we had keys, which were the students' names, and values, which were the students' IDs. So if we print, if we iterate over the dictionary by default, or if we iterate over students.keys, those two things are equivalent. We get the names because those are the keys. And if we iterate over the values, then we get the values, which in this case were the student IDs. So we can iterate over keys or values, or we can iterate over items. So that is both the key and the value together. And that is a very common thing that we want to do, say, for each student ID plus the information that I'm storing about that student. So like, let's say that at the end of this course, I might write some kind of a program and I might have a dictionary called grades that says 2001-25805, that's me. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do okay in this course, I think. And 2021-12345, uh, maybe they're gonna do really well, they're gonna get a 97, etc. cetera. Um, so if I want to look up a specific student, I can. I can say, what was the grade for 2001-25805? And if I want to, I can iterate over for student ID in, grades, print student ID, but I could also use the items method. So that's going to give me both a key and a value. So how in the world is it going to do that? What will the type of item be, do you think? And it's kind of a guess. It's okay if you get it wrong. Uh, so that, that's an okay guess. It's not right, but it is a pretty good guess. So if I'm going to have a key and a value, so each item in the dictionary has a key and a value, two items, or two, two things, a, a key and a value, how can item contain both the key and the value? What type of value, or what types of things can contain two things? 
Yeah, a tuple. So a list would be an okay guess as well, or, or an array or something, but it is in fact a tuple. So you see each item in the dictionary, we can iterate over the items and get each one out as a tuple. Here's your key, here's your value. So very often, you will see something that looks like this. And I'll do this, I'll print it that way. So very often you will see, what is this? This is tuple destructuring. So we're saying for each item, I know that's two things. It's a key and a value. So I'm going to take that tuple that I know you're going to give me. I'm going to break it into two separate things so that I can talk about them separately. So this is super, super common for something comma something in a dictionary dot items. And so you can see here that the key 2001-25805 maps to the value 85 and the value 2021-12345 maps to 97. I don't think we have a 2021 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this course. Uh, if I do, then well, maybe that's going to be your grade. So hooray. But uh, this is meant to be just kind of a random, uh, well, an arbitrary value. It's definitely not random. Um, but so we can iterate over the keys in a dictionary. We can iterate over the values in a dictionary. And we can iterate over the items in a dictionary, where an item is both a key and a value. Yep. Um, so in some circum so the question is um, if I can just say for key in grades, why would I ever want to explicitly say key grades dot keys? Is that the question? Right. The answer is because this is a little bit more explicit. I mean, it does the same thing. The computer kind of doesn't care but it's a little bit more explicit about your intentions. It's a little bit more explicit about the fact that you expect this thing to be a dictionary, and therefore other people reading your code might just have a little bit more clarity about what you were thinking when you were writing the code. And that's kind of the reason. So we can also iterate over those items. And this is where I said previously, whether this is an ordered or an unordered container, eh, just as, don't assume that it's ordered. In recent versions of Python, some things about the definition have changed, and sometimes actually it is kind of ordered, kind of, sort of. Um, but we shouldn't go around assuming that it's ordered because eh, sometimes it isn't. And especially other code that you interact with is not going to make those assumptions. So dictionaries are really helpful when we don't care about the order of things, but we do care about being able to give sensible names to things. If we are looking for, uh, if we're gonna store a bunch of, well, let's say attendance values, I might want to say, okay, here is a string that represents the date of a particular class, and now I want to store what was the attendance on this day, that day, that day. I might not care that it was class 13, I might just care that it was the class that happened on February the 15th because that was the day of the midterm, and I want to see if the attendance is up or down. Um, and dictionaries allow us to find things by key, and that process is super fast, really, really fast. So instead of having to search through 40 million records or 40 billion records, we can say, OK, what's the hash value for this key? Now, instantly, I can just find it in that um, dictionary, which is super helpful. The details of how come in term four, if you're interested. Um, but we use dictionaries in lots of Python code. Um, there's a numerical, or there's a, a, there's a package called Pandas, which is widely used for data analysis. It's the Python and numerical data analysis stuff. I'm not sure exactly what it stands for, but Pandas, anyway, is the name. Um, and it provides a lot of useful functionality for creating and managing large chunks of data, computing statistics on them, multi-dimensional data, and saying, OK, well, let's look at this column of data and this column of data and, and do stuff with it. Um, and you'll see that Pandas behaves, it, when these data frames behave an awful lot like dictionaries, in the sense of you can say, here's a column name in this big table. And this is you know, a, an example that was very topical uh, recently. Maybe next year I'll take this picture out of the slides, because wouldn't that be nice uh, if we can stop thinking about that. But the, we can say, dear pandas, I've got a whole bunch of data, 
and I've got, here's a bunch of dates, and I want to know cases and hospitalizations and whatever. Well, just give me the cases, or just give me the hospitalizations. And we, so we can use a column name as like a key to pull things out. Um, and so, and what you get is then a series of data. So pandas behaves a lot like a dictionary. It's actually more sophisticated than a dictionary. It does lots of other things, but it behaves in many ways like a dictionary. So if you're going to write code that does use something like pandas, whether it's for a project or for whatever other stuff, uh, when people come to Python, matplotlib, numpy, pandas, and these days sometimes flask are kind of the big packages that people often want to use. And often the reason they want to use Python is because it has these packages. Um, and it's a more convenient or more reliable way of doing certain kinds of data analysis than like MATLAB or something. So dictionaries are a bit different from other types of collections we've seen. Uh, they are associative. We can associate a, a value with a key, which allows us to look up that value by its key. We can still iterate over values. We can iterate over keys. We can iterate over values. We can iterate over items. But the main thing that dictionaries allow us to do is to grab things by their name, as long as that name is something immutable. So that's how dictionaries, or how we use dictionaries, what their syntax looks like. Um, and yeah, that's what we're going to say about dictionaries. So you may find them very useful. Um, yeah, you may find them useful in project work that you do or, or kind of almost anything else. All right, so that's going to be it for today. Let me look at questions. Someone says, can you go through the assignment? Uh, not at this point. Um, but if you have a specific question about your assignment, I'd be happy to chat about it if you want to send me an email or something, maybe. All right, and I'm not seeing other questions coming up. So at this point, I guess we will end that stream. And uh, we'll plan to see each other again on Monday.